Hey there, welcome to another episode of the Contractor Click Podcast. In this episode, we're going to talk about breakthrough in your business and accessing a different level of breakthrough that you've been looking for and probably wondering how you can access that. And with me, I have individuals that are going to help you understand this topic at a different level. Pastor TJ McCormick. TJ McCormick, your first name? Yeah. What's your first name? Timothy James. Timothy James. There you go. <laughs> uh, people always wonder, like, my wife always asks, hey, what's TJ for? Total jerk. It's out there now. Oh, total jerk. <laughs> total jerk. Uh, if you want to succeed in business, just be a total jerk. It's just <laughs> oh, so well, helpful. Well, that's I'm one just, way of doing yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Pastor Josh. Joshua. Uh, Joshua. Actually, no, Joshua. Yeah. Okay. Only my mother gets to call me that. Okay. <laughs> yes, and Andrea, when, when he, she's really mad at him. Yeah. When mostly it's when I'm in trouble. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Good to know. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's uh, let's dive right in. I mean, I you know, business uh, individuals that listen to this podcast, they're contractors. They're out on the field. They're building business. You've been a contractor yourself. Yeah. Uh, and you're a builder. Yeah. Of churches and people. Um, one of the questions I want to ask is. Uh, when when you are seeing someone on the other side, you've been leading hundreds of individuals. What's one common thing that stands out that's keeping them from that next level in their life and business? I think it's a lack of humility to mm, ask good. the right questions. You know, so many people, they, they want to put off a vibe of like, I've got this. I mm -hmm, know it mm -hmm. all. Like, I'm good. And I think what keeps most people from taking it to the next level is asking really, really good questions. And then actually taking the information they learn from somebody that's ahead of them and applying it to their context. Mm. Yeah, that's uh, the key. I, I mean, Josh and I yeah. talk about this all the time. All what the we're time. looking for in people is teachability. Yeah. Mm. And I don't care what level you're at. You wow. know, we're, we're in, in our industry, we're in the top 0.1% of the churches in America around the world. Mm -hmm. But I look at it like, man, I can always get better. I can always be learning. Yeah, and I always yeah. have to have people that are ahead of me that I'm asking really good questions for to mm -hmm. and going, hey, what is the what is the thing that I need to see right now that I can't see? What are the mm -hmm. what are the what are the roadblocks that are in front of me that maybe I'm lacking awareness in right now? So yeah. I can I can see that in myself, so I can see it in our organization, so I can see it in our business, so we can go to the next level. Wow. Yeah. I, I went through a, a pretty recent transition where I was at our Parkland location. Now I'm at our Lighthouse Point location. So it's been interesting because people come in, you know, they I come into that situation. People think I know everything. And I go, hey, like, I'm not I'm not coming in here assuming I know everything about what's going on here. Yeah. I'm coming in ready to learn. And you would think, I think their perception is, well, you've been around for a little bit. Like, you, you were at a larger location. I'm like, no, this is this is brand new information for me. You're a brand new person. I got to get to know you. I see what's working and what's not working, but I'm not, I'm not showing up guns blazing. I'm, I'm showing up assuming I don't know. Mm. And so that keeps me at a pretty like teachable and humble place. And I can, I mean, there's always room to learn and grow like no matter what you're going through. Yeah. So you got to be teachable. Yes. Um, now the same token, I would say, when you're looking at, at the entire organization, it's like you can have the systems, the processes, the numbers dialed in. But for me, what I've realized recently is like, hey, the ultimate pinnacle is like the people. You got that right, everything else flows. Because you can build this, the system from the bottom up and thinking, okay, well, I'm going to, and this is for myself, I'm speaking for myself, contractor, clear, concrete marketing crew. <laughs> it's like I'm going to have all the SOPs, all the processes, all the systems, but the people that run it is it's the key. Yeah. That's yes. what really makes it work. It's all um, about culture. It's all about the culture. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. Uh, you built uh, uh, an incredible culture. The people that are attracted to the organization are, are amazing individuals. Uh, Coastal Community Church. How much of that um, do you play and how much of that does your spouse play in helping you and supporting you? And how does that look like? I, I mean, our cult, I mean, Josh can speak to this as well. Mm -hmm. Sure. Because Josh yeah. has been with us 10 years. Yep. Uh, we talk all about time. culture all the time. I mean, all the time. Every, every corrective conversation has yeah. to do with a cultural element. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have internal cultural values that we, yes. Yes. we live by, and we talk about those constantly. And that, that means everything. Like, if somebody doesn't fit culturally, it doesn't matter how good they are at their job. Yes. If they're not a That's culture so fit, they're not yeah. a good fit. Yeah. And 
So we value that above everything. I mean, we build our entire above shirt skill, above skill. Really, skill yeah. can be taught. Yes, okay. you can train aptitude, but it's really hard to train attitude. Like somebody coming in with the right, like like I. So I just recently hired a guy, um, and he he has a lot of aptitude, but the thing that is so attractive about him is his attitude. Like, cause he's so humble, he's so teachable, he's so good with people, and like those are things that are really hard to teach and and it takes it might take somebody a little bit because you can see their potential but like at this point like it's i'm not looking to hire based on your potential like i'm looking to see like hey what do you already have and then is there potential in your growth in your talents and in your like you see what i'm saying like yes i i'm looking first at like do i like this person are they like do others like them um, cause that's honestly the thing I was thinking about with this individual is like, it's not just that I like him, man, I'm having other people come up to me and go, man, like there's something about that guy, like yeah. X factor in him. And that's something that you can't, I feel like that's hard to teach someone. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's at the same point, like I had to catch a lot of culture. I, I feel like coming into coastal 2014, we were a mobile church at the time. We were running two locations in a high school and a movie theater. Man, I, I, I was like, I, I honestly came in and thought I knew a lot and realized it doesn't matter how much I know. This is a totally different environment. And if I can come in and my mentality every weekend, because we were rolling in at like 5, 5 a.m. Like, mm -hmm. and we're, we have volunteers. I mean, they're showing up on their day off. And I'm going, man, if my attitude sucks... And like, I'm not at my 10 in my attitude and, and my personality, like this team is gonna, this team is gonna suffer and that's on me. So I think this finding that person that has like that X factor, man, is so key. But I think part of, part of it is, is, you know, when we bring somebody into it, that's new onto our team, the first thing we do is we go, Hey, we're not looking for you to produce initially. <laughs> mm, right. We're looking for you to learn. Yep. Mm, mm. Learn for a year. Learn, learn, learn for a year. How, at least a year. How we talk, like the language we use, is important. Yeah. Like there's a language to our organization. Mm -hmm. There, there is a right. work ethic to our organization. There is a way we treat people in our organization. Yes, yes. And before you want to come in and do all this stuff, mm -hmm. I need you to come in and learn who we are and the why behind the what. Wow. Yeah. Like we know what we're, you know, whether you're a contract. Right. Oh, we, uh, we build houses. We. Mm -hmm. Uh, hang drywall. I, that's what we do. Like, why do we do it this way? Why is this our process? Yeah. Why do we treat the customer like this? Mm. Why do we communicate in this manner mm. instead of this manner? Like, before you come in and start giving us all kinds of suggestions, why don't you understand who we are and why we do what wow. we do? Yeah. yeah. Because what will happen is, is you bring in somebody and they don't have your culture. They'll come in and they might produce a lot, but they're jacking up the rest of the organization. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And the fallout, like people are your most valuable asset. Yes. Yeah. It's not the product, it's not the service, it's the people you yes. have. So you wanna make sure that they embody the things that you're actually trying to build because culture is gonna trickle down and the impact of that is gonna trickle down. So I wanna make sure that you get us, that you understand our heart, our nature, why we do what we do, and then we can go work on other things. One of the things that TJ said to me several times because it's, it's been several times is he said and this was so valuable for me because i knew i knew that hey in this organization like i'm safe and you said to me pretty early on hey there's not a mis there's not a big enough mistake that you can make that i can't help you clean up mm, like that's good. and yeah. that the yeah. value that that placed in me of like hey i value you as a person so much that like regardless of the thing that you screw up and I think there, it, Coastal has always been a place where if you can fail, but it's like you fail safe. It's within mm -hmm. a certain context, and like, um, but we're not I, encouraging people to go fail. But no, we're, right. we're saying not, that we're saying, not what I'm hey, saying. we want like, you, you know. we want you to step out and take some risk. Yes, and yes. if yes. if you mess up, it's okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. like that's not going to be the end of you, but. You are also in the reason why Josh has so much freedom to go do whatever he wants is because he has so much trust when it comes to he understands our culture. So if he's making a decision and if it ends up being a bad decision, I can I can fix that. Yeah. Okay. But it's yeah, because yeah. he embraces and values and lives out our culture so strong.
Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So uh, part of that, how long did it take you to develop that? Our culture? Your methodology <laughs> and embracing that. Because I would assume like when you were first starting out, did you come in with that in mind and say, you know, I'm going to build a culture? Or was that something that under the pressure of growth you you? No, no. I like, mean, we've always... so. The great news is, is that I came from a really, really healthy, vibrant culture of the church mm. I, I was at before. And so I saw a healthy culture model. I saw values highly uh, put out front and then modeled. And I knew that if we were going to build a, in our context, a great church and a great organization and a healthy organization, then I had to model that. I had to lead that. I had to talk about that constantly and i had to celebrate when people embodied those values mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. uh, when we used to do we used to do a, a a monthly gathering of leaders i would hand out a rock star energy drink like i would just highlight people that embody a value that we had mm. and so i was you know what you celebrate gets repeated yeah. yeah so i would celebrate the things that people were doing that were embodying the values that we wanted to see in our organization mm -hmm. and so even today, while we have a great culture and a great health, we're constantly talking about those things, even mm -hmm. to today. I mean, when somebody onboards, like I sit down and we talk about, here are the things that we value. Mm -hmm. Here are the things that we expect. And then what's happened is, is our evaluation for at their end of the year and the reviews is now becoming based on how do they embody our values? Yeah. Because if you embody our values, then we know your production is going to be there. You're going to be hitting goals and you're going to be hitting marks because you're embodying the values that we have. Wow. So how do you hire for culture? What are, what are, what are the signals <laughs> and the things that you're looking for? Because you, you must have like multiple layers, right? Multiple uh, interviews, et cetera. But how do you determine, hey, they, they actually embody, like what signals are you looking for uh, throughout that process. Well, I mean, we, we're pretty hardcore when it comes to hiring. I mean, yeah. it's a, it's an extensive process. I mean, they'll start with an, they'll probably go through three to four phone or Skype or zoom interviews. Yeah. And then we typically bring somebody in for four or five days. And then I think this is one of the key elements to us distinguishing whether they really embody our values because anybody can fake it on the front end yeah, like you yeah, can yeah. fake an interview or two but when you bring somebody in for four or five days and you bring them in with their spouse ideally at least we do um yes and we put it's them important. in environments and we just wear their butt out honestly yep. we're wearing them out we're interviewing we're doing so many things because we want to know who are you when you're tired yep because here's what i know That's you're gonna good. get tired yes who are you when you're under stress this is four or five days this is four or five <laughs> days i remember um it wasn't that long ago maybe it was like two years ago we brought in a guy that was for a video director position that we are looking to hire and uh, we got to our weekend services and and at the time we were doing five or six services. i don't know how many yeah, services we lot. were doing but i walked into a room after like our last service and one of the things we value is, is hard work. And I walked into this room as I was cutting through to go to a lobby, to go talk to people after a service. And the guy was in there asleep. And I was like, he just doesn't have the stamina for our organization. But I would have yep. never seen that had it been just a, because he said all the right things on the phone yep. and all the Zooms had all the lingo, which is normally how we hire people, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, they sound good. They 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 said yeah, all the yeah. right things. One but or two calls and one hey, or two calls hired. and then boom. <laughs> I think the reason we struggle in hiring is because we're not asking more of people, you know, mm. and I'm looking for a person that's hungry. So a person that's hungry is gonna be willing to give up yeah. four days to mm. come for a great job. I remember when I first got a call from TJ, I think it was October 2013 i was walking back from class i was finishing up school and we probably talked on the phone for three months for like an hour every week just asking each other questions and i was like this is way different than any other interview process i was going through at the time um and i liked that it was intentional and it just got to a point where it was like i remember shayla said like tj's wife she said hey we just need to get you down here and make sure you're not weird and i loved <laughs> that because i was like I, I think that's important. I want to yeah, make yeah, sure yeah. you're not weird either, <laughs> you know, but my, my experience was like very much how we still do things. Like we still like have multiple conversations and it's not just with one person either. It's like that person's getting passed around 
because TJ's perspective is different than mine. Shayla's perspective is different than mine because I want to see how they interact and and almost like us go back to a conversation and go, well, hey, what did they say about this? Yeah. So in an interview, like mm. Josh and Andrew might go out to lunch with somebody mm. and and they'll say something odd about something. Then he'll come and go, oh, mm. you're going with him next. Hey, press on this issue. Yep. Mm. And, and what it allows yeah. us to do is it allows a lot of us to get a lot of different vantage points. And yeah. we're able to get to the to the deep down things and it's really know somebody. Layers of conversation. Layers of conversation yeah. that we're distinguished. This is on top of all the personality tests and all the other things that we do yeah. on the front end before front we ever end. decide to invest. Because it's an investment. It's an investment to fly somebody in. It's yes, an investment yes. to put them up in a hotel. It's an investment to spend all that time and take them out to meals and do all those things. But we're... We look at it like, man, this person is going to be critical and an integral part of our organization. We want to make sure they embody those things and they embrace the values. And do they get it? Do they want it? And do they have the capacity to do it? Yeah. yeah. And and over time, you can really figure that out. And while we're doing that, we, we get to look and, ooh, do they embody this value of ours? Ooh, do they embrace this? Hey, I'm not really sure. Let's press in. Let's ask some more questions around that. Yeah. And it's just allowed us to hire, like, I think we have the best staff mm -hmm. because we've been so intentional in that environment. And by the end of it, like, I remember this, this other guy was like, at, when we were taking him to the airport, he's like, I didn't get this job, did I? And I was like, no, you didn't. Like <laughs> he knew that he didn't have what it takes to be a part of our organization mm, yeah. by the end of that. And we didn't, we would have never known that without doing that extensively. Mm -hmm. And that's how we protect our culture. Yep. So you're protecting, you're vetting, we're protecting, we're uh, vetting. Bringing in. Yeah, because the, one person can jack up your culture. Yes. Yes, yes. And All it, it takes is one. And ask yourself this question, too. I may, maybe this is this might be unique to us, but I think, it's, I think it's something you should ask. Would I want to spend extra time with this person on my day off? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. because, <laughs> yeah. because, I mean, like, that, that question will tell you a lot about what you think about that person. Yeah. If I, like... I'm always now the last interview. So partly because one, uh, I believe the best in people. So I don't want to see their, I'm, I'm just being honest. Like I don't want to see their flaws. Um, and I don't, I always see the potential in them. So I need other people to do that that are way more discerning than me. Yeah. And this is a good, this is good for business owners because you think, yes, well, so. I've got to, yeah. no, 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 no. You might not be the most discerning person. So you need to have some other people on your team that can help you vet like josh is a great person for me like josh is going to really help them know culture my wife does a great job she's our executive director she does a great job of discernment we have yep. we have other staff depending on the area that they're going to be in that are going to help them they're going to help me know discernment because mm -hmm. that's not my strength but what i'm going to look at is is like do i like you and do i want to see you every day <laughs> yeah and, and that's an important thing because, like, if you just look at them and you're like disgusted, it's not going to be a very good hire. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I remember Shayla actually approached. We were talking about this this guy I just hired, and it was probably two months ago. She was like, "Hey, what do you think we should do?" And and I said, "Shayla, I really don't know culturally if he's a fit yet. I need to see him. Like, I need to see him in a lot of different." ways before I can make that call. And it would actually have benefited me greatly to hire him earlier. But I'm, but like, I'm not willing to make a bad hire. Like it's just, and, and I'm not saying you get it perfect every time. Cause we've, we've not had many people leave our organization, but what it came down to pretty much every time was like, ah, is a cultural thing. Yeah. Um, and so I'm willing to wait on the front end because I, I don't, if <laughs> you're, you're going to pay for it later, yeah. right? Pay now or pay later. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and, and paying later is way more expensive. It, it's when compromising in the front end that yeah. Yeah. it's going to cost you the most. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so yeah that's, good. that's powerful. So, um, let's, let's bring God into the conversation <laughs> because, and I have these conversations with, uh, individuals that are, they're Christian, they're business people, but they see this whole spectrum as it's a separate uh, world, right? So I'm a Christian here uh, and I'm a business owner there. Yeah. And, I, and you're and, driving results in the middle. <laughs> like how do you... And I would, here's what I would say. Don't, don't give up your God-given values in pursuit of your God-given dreams. Mm. Mm. 
I think we separate those things and go, well, this is my business dream and this is my God thing and I'm going to keep this over here. No, no, no. Those got those to intertwine. Like your values and your, your dreams, they got to intertwine. And if they don't, then, then you are a hypocrite. Yes. So, yeah. so how do you integrate your values into how you run your business? Mm -hmm. And when you do that, it is powerful. Mm -hmm. Because people then know, they always know how you're going to stand. They always know how you're going to respond. Right. Yeah. Like, I, it's so interesting to me because, like, I am a driven, and I'm a type A personality. I am driven. I mean, Josh will tell you, I am, I am a driven. We couldn't be more different. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jo if, if you look at us on personality scales, yeah. like, we're the exact opposite. We, yeah, it's like D personality. And then, you know, if you've ever done the disc <laughs> assessment, like, I am steady. And, and that's actually, I think, why we get along so well. I, th I think it's actually helped us understand each other better, and it helps me serve the vision of Coastal. Yeah, but it's, it's a value, be and here's what it is, is because I, one of my values is I value people. Mm -hmm. I see my differences because Josh's pace is different than my pace. Yeah. Mm. That doesn't mean Josh's pace is right, bad. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Josh's pace is actually better because he walks through the, cl cl the crowd slower than I do and sees people differently than mm. I do. Mm -hmm. I'm just moving, 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 moving. Like, what's next, 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 next? But if I'm always going to what's next, who's taking care of what's now? Mm. And Josh, Josh is excellent at taking care of what's now. And I know that in order to go where we need to go, I need to have people that do that and I value them. But here's what yeah. Josh knows how I'm always going to respond. Yeah. Like, mm. because and I live my years. values out. <laughs> yep. hundred percent. Every, like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not this way one day and right, this right, way right. another day. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. I, I live by a set of principles mm. and those principles mm -hmm. always play out. And those principles are part of our culture. Mm. I was writing something out the other day uh, with, with a group is actually a job description. And I, and we got to this point and I, and I literally, the, my filter is how would TJ say this? Mm. Like, and, and what is our culture? And based on those two things, I can get pretty close and that's taken. I mean, I'm still learning I, all, all the time, but I think after being here for about 10 years, like I, I, I have a pretty good idea, but I'll, I mean, I'll call, I'll call him if I don't know the answer. Like, and I think the accessibility for me is, is really valuable. Cause I can call him up and go, Hey man, like, I just need your input on this. And I think when we, it just goes back to humility. Like when we think we know, mm -hmm. I think that's where things get dangerous in any, yeah, yeah. in any business, yeah. like whether you're a church or you're a contractor, like if you think, you know, all the time and are not willing to learn from somebody else and, and you also need to find the right voice, like know what the right voice is. Um, but that's helped me tremendously. Yeah. So how do you now carry the the levels of pressure that come at the next level? <laughs> right? Which oh, and, and yeah. how do you how do you manage like first as a leader and then you know you as, as sure. someone that's that's also leading people? Um because I, I feel like that's a big challenge and sometimes the closer you get to that next level, you wanna lean back and say, Well, I'm comfortable here, like it's yeah. good here. Well, you I, know. and I think that this is a great question for every business guy. Um, you know, more success just means more problems. Bigger problems. And bigger problems. They're just more expensive problems. Yes. Mm. You know, um, and it doesn't always mean a bigger return, though, too. Right. And I, I think a lot of times we're That's always true. pushing for more when sometimes we should just go, you know what? I love being... You know, I don't need to be a $3 million company. I can mm. I can have a great company at $2 million and have the time with my family that I want, like the less organizational mm. stress, and it just be content with that. You know, I think Paul, I would go biblical. Paul said, I've learned the secret of contentment. Mm. So good. And sometimes you got to, you got to learn like, Maybe the next level isn't necessarily what I really want in my life. What like what that's going to create yes, for me yes. from time away from my family, yes. from being able to raise my kids. Yes. Maybe that isn't what I want or even what I need. I can live I can live out my dreams right here at this level. Wow. But society's always telling us to press for more. Mm. Yeah. And so, so I, I think you have to ask yourself, one, is that what I'm called to? And is that really what I desire? Because I, what I've found, there's a great book called Predictable Success. Mm. Um, and 
you might find that you don't want to go higher. Right. You might be like, this is a great business right here because higher means I'm going to have to create more structure. I'm going to have to create more things. I'm going to deal with more stress. I'm going to have to be in more meetings. And not everybody's great with that. So I think that that's the first question. But how do you manage that? Um, because I, I'm in that case right now. I think you, you've got to have great outlets. Like what brings you joy in life? Mm. Um, because if if money and prestige are all that it is, like there's never going to be enough. Mm. So you, you got to find something bigger than that. Um, and I think you have to have some really good friends around you that can tell you the truth. That's good. Um, when I'm, when I'm having those stressful, difficult days, I have, I have five guys that I can call and they're going to give me wisdom. They're going to, they're going to bring me back to center because what happens is, is when, when you're stressed, you get really far right or you get really far left and they're going to center you back on what's most important and what you value in life. Yeah. And, uh, I think that that's been a helpful thing and I, I play golf. It's an outlet. You can hit <laughs> something and you're allowed to hit it. And that's just stress relieving. I think one of the things I, I go back to with pressure and I've, and I would say the last maybe three months, really the first three months in my transition, there was a lot of pressure. I mean, I had people asking me questions. Um, you know, again, the expectation on me that I think people had was like, you're going to come in and change everything. Um, but for me, what I go back to is, and, and you just, you just mentioned it. Don't, don't replace the important for something urgent. Like there's, cause everybody's going to come to you with what they think is urgent. Mm -hmm. And I have to filter like, is this urgent for you? Or is this actually an important thing that has urgency to it? You don't want to neglect that. But I think like, it's just helped me a lot. That filter of like, what's not, what's, what's, what am I trying to say? Like, your urgency is not necessarily my urgency yes. when it comes to the organizational health. Um, and what you think is important is may not actually be important to us. And so I've had to have a lot of conversations about, Hey, that's, that's not actually how we do this. Um, and people don't like that, but I think it ends up being healthy for them in the future. <laughs> that's yeah. one thing about being a leader. You have to tell people no a lot. Yeah. And, uh, and you gotta have, and, and be graceful while doing it. Correct, because you because you want them to know the truth. And I mean, yeah. if you if you want to talk about bringing God into the the conversation, like Jesus was the and just such the most incredible example of like I'm going to give you the truth, but I'm going to do it in such a way that you know how much grace and much how much love I have for yeah. you. And and like when somebody comes to me and they're upset because I think uh, being a pastor, you you see people. Most of the time, you're either seeing them at a really like, like an incredible moment in their life. Like you get to celebrate with them, and yeah, those that's the tops, and it's valleys, and it, and then you see them <laughs> at their absolute <laughs> worst. And most of the time, it's like you because you want to catch the problem way before, yes. but they don't have the self awareness, mm. and so you have to go, you have to walk them back through this process of like, kind of all right, let's retrace your steps. And and you don't want to make them feel stupid. You also, you you don't want to assume you know everything because yeah. I think when we see people, we don't, when when we start to lose compassion for people, it's because mm -hmm. we, we stopped remembering, man, I probably don't know how much pain they're actually going through. Yeah. Yeah. And assuming that yeah. I know everything about yeah. them is just, it's not healthy. So you gotta, I think you gotta ask good questions. You gotta spend time with them and really help them through that we call it a sanctification process, but it's, it's helping them in their journey. Like, yeah. Hey, let's get, let's get you back to a healthy place. And I'm willing to walk with you and spend time with you to get you back there. And cause people are, are our greatest investment. Yeah. So how do you pour into your people, into your leaders on a, on a weekly basis, monthly? Are you intentional about that? Do you have a plan in place or is it I season mean, by season, and you're carrying through. I think it's different it's more at this point. You know, in our organization, our organization has gotten large enough where there's layers now. Okay, um, but like Josh is not a direct report of mine. Like right. Josh is somewhere down the organizational chart. But mm -hmm. like last week, I was like, Josh, let's go grab lunch. Yeah. So I'm a I'm a highly relational leader. So I'm going to go and just do relationship, and out of that conversation is going to happen. Yeah. Um, and so I think that that is the beauty of 
part of our organization is we are a highly relational, caring organization. We actually like spending time with each other. So it's not like a duty to go grab lunch with Josh. Oh yeah. my gosh, I gotta go have lunch with Josh. Like yeah. I actually love spending time with Josh yeah. and I want to see Josh succeed. I love his family. I love his his wife who now works for you yeah, yeah. was like the voice of our church and social mm -hmm. media and everything. So like she, like they, rock they, star. she is a rock star. We yes. might steal her back from you. Oh, come on. Uh, <laughs> Can't like, do that. Uh, <laughs> right. The podcast so show. There's a I'll give right you more now. money. I'm going to get you a raise at least. No, I'm just, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it's, it's like, man, I, I value these people. So I just want to invest in them personally. Like yeah. I, mm -hmm. so most of my time now, I'm not actually talking about our organizational stuff. I'm talking about their personal lives. Yeah. So when, like, when personal I meet, lives. we're yeah. talking about, like, man, how are your kids doing? How are you and Andrea doing? Like, how are you doing financially? What is your plan? Like, when are you get on way of vacation? Like, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm caring for Love their that. soul. Mm -hmm. There's other people that care for the metrics now. Yeah. Right. I just get to right. care for their soul, and so when there are difficult conversations, here's what Josh knows. Josh knows I care first and foremost about him. Yeah. So when I come to have a difficult conversation, it's never, it's never a, a, a personal thing. This is about, hey, we need to be doing this. Yeah. Or we need to change this. Mm. And you already know I love you. Yeah. So I've made lots of right, deposits. Right. So when I go to take a withdrawal, mm -hmm. it's, it isn't like there's no- Yeah, it's not there, shocking. There's no, <laughs> there's not a lack of equity there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason that struggles in most organizations is because there's no equity. There's been no investment in that mm -hmm. person mm -hmm. as a person. Then you go to take a withdrawal and they're like, heck no. Mm. Yeah. Equity is the key. That's good. Like relational equity. I talk about it with every, every person that I lead. Um, and I think, I think you also got to look at like, man, I'm, I might be, are you leading too little people or are, are you also leading too many people? Um, because, I think everybody prob probably has like a different. Um, they all have different. Lids. Yeah, different bandwidth. Yeah, yeah. but um, I know for me, and and this is what I'm figuring out right now. I, I was talking to a leader, and they were like, "Man, I think we need eight people to lead this this particular team." And I'm going, "Yeah, but that's eight people I've got to meet with consistently. Mm -hmm. I actually think we can do it with fewer, and I can make greater investment in a few. I mean, if you look at Jesus, like, man, he had." He had the 12 disciples, then the 72, the 120. But like, you think about, well, how's Jesus going to interact with that many people all the time? And what I think people don't realize is he had three dudes that he was consistently pouring into. And then those three guys were going, okay. And, and they're constantly filtering. You can see it in scripture. They're, they have a filter. They're like, man, what? that's why the, the phrase, what would Jesus do is popular? Because it's a filter. Mm -hmm. And so I'm thinking about that, but I'm also thinking about, like what? What is our culture? What do we value? Um, and and that allows me to lead people really well because I have this constant filter of like, man, how how would number one, how would Jesus treat this person? Then number two, like, what would TJ say in this moment? Mm -hmm. And then what are our values? And and can I can I bring this person? Can I build this person from those things? And I, I think you just got to know like your limit, your bandwidth. Like, I think that's really important. Yeah. Spiritual pouring into your people. Do you treat it the same way throughout those conversations? How does that look like? For I you? think every person's a little bit different. I think you yeah. have to, you know, that, and this is where it goes back to, I communicate differently to different people because they receive things differently. Mm, mm. So, you know, um, uh, that's why we do like a personality test. It, every, is, like, it is. Like I know what. <laughs> so we we use a thing called. Um, oh my gosh, why is why is it disc? Qualities. No, it's not a disc. It's, it's, it's ministry a, insights. Ministry insights strengths finder. Yeah, and so there's a there's a color there's colors yeah. to it, and so like, That's cool. you know, I I know what color people are like, and so. I know that if I I'm I'm a red like if I'm talking to another red I can be bottom line with them. Mm -hmm. If I'm talking to a yellow, it's going to be an emotional wow. conversation. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm talking to a blue, it needs to be informational. Like, mm. so, like I need to know who I'm talking to, and then I'm I, as a leader, I cater to them. Mm -hmm. I don't expect them to cater to me. And I think a lot That's of leaders good. they expect That's their good. people to cater to them. No, no, no. As a leader, you're to be serving the people in their organization. Yes. yes. Yeah. And a lot of leaders think, well, the people in the organization are here to serve me. And that's why you have high turnover. 
Because yeah, if yeah. you would realize that you're there to serve them and you're there to make their life better and you're there to do that, they will go above and beyond for the organization because they know you actually care. Yeah. Incredible. For sure. Oh, I love it. I have a guy who just started helping me on our production team. And when I was when I was evaluating, like, man, do I have like have I put in enough time with this person? Have I cared for their family enough? Have I have I gone out to lunch with them and asked them how they're doing personally? Um, have I have I invested enough so I can make this pretty big withdrawal? Um, and I and I to myself, I was like, I think I can do that. And then they actually went above and beyond that. So I didn't realize the bandwidth that they even had, but they actually felt like, man, I, I actually have more. I, I can actually help you more than you realize. And man, what a relief that was because it's just, man, invest in your people. The relational equity aspect is so important. And you can't pour from an empty cup, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you go about maintaining yourself, taking care of yourself yeah. when you're going fa fast pace, 100 well, miles an hour? I mean, I'm, I'm disciplined in life. Mm -hmm. I think discipline is the thing. Um, I, I wake up 3.30 every day my first hour is spent with God. Mm. So mm. I'm, I'm never pouring from an empty cup. Mm. That's good. Because I'm getting filled up and that, and that, you know, part of my job is, is I preach, I lead, but the preaching time with God comes at other times. This is just TJ's time with God. Like, God, what are you trying to do in yeah, me? Yeah. How are you speaking to me? It's, yeah. it's my time with him. That's just personal. Um, and that's how I stay full. And then I surround myself with people that are, building are there to build me up i have those relationships in my life i at times i pay people to coach me because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. i'm never i'm never too big not to be coached um and i think it's a great investment in myself i read constantly um our our staff will tell you like i probably got a book for anything that you're going through because i just yeah i constantly am wanting to get better well mm -hmm. how do i get better if i'm not pursuing growth and i think pursuing growth will cause you to get better and then surrounding yourself with people that are further ahead i think you've got to have and something i tell our staff you got to have one or two people that you're talking to that are ahead of you yes mm -hmm. um and that aren't a part of our organization that are a part of in our case other churches that are successful yeah. that they can they can help you navigate things that you don't even know you're going to need to navigate that they can help you walk through situations that will just make you better in your job and so, you know, I think if you do those couple of things, and that's not a lot, but if you're consistent in it, and that's what discipline mm -hmm. is, it's being consistent that's in things, right. um, it's a game changer. And so it, it makes it easy. And then I think just physically taking care of yourself is a good mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Because uh, I, I love what Dion, you know, he says, uh, it's on his wall of his office. He says, look good, feel good, feel good, play good, play good, get paid good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a great statement. So yeah, you, yeah. you you, you got to look good. So you got you to take care of this this vessel that you have. And I think a lot of us, we're abusing this thing. Yes. And I'm a person that abused it for a long time. I was so busy trying to build everything else that I forgot to take care of myself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, over the last year or so, man, I've, I've really focused on taking care of myself and getting in shape. I thought round was a shape, but it's not a good shape, you know? And so, <laughs> and so like, like, this is for me this is the temple of the holy spirit like how am i treating it i'm not trying to build a mansion i'm trying to i'm trying to build something that's that's suitable that when people look at because here's the thing i learned i'm disciplined in a lot of things but i wasn't disciplined for me wow. and so people would look at my life and go well you might be really good at reading the bible but man you're you're fat mm. so like are you really disciplined yeah. and i got convicted yeah. like i was yeah, like yeah, yeah. like so i'm disciplined for things of god but i'm not disciplined enough to take care of me man shame on me that's good. Yeah. That's very good. I think if you're listening to this, you get to see how real and raw pastor TJ McCormick is. Coastal Community Church in South Florida. Um, we're going to put the link right into, into the description here. YouTube channel, the podcast that they have going on every single week. Mm -hmm. Make sure you tune in. Um, but what I want you to, um, to tell me a little bit more here, it's, I believe, body being balanced in business. Um, balance, relationship. We haven't talked about that. <laughs> you're going fast paced. You're running a business. Yeah. Um, you're doing this with your partner. Um, and there's a lot of business owners that 
either don't want to do it with their partner or they have the partners and they just don't have clarity into how to manage the relationship separated, involved. You know, yeah. it's because it's 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 uh, sometimes I, I think it's hard to separate, you know, hey, this is who we are, how we do life. Um, you know, from from uh, for me and Maddie, for example, we're running a business, mm -hmm. so the conversations carry over later on. You know, yeah. And they, yeah, we go out for dates, but still, we're talking about like other stuff. And like, how, how do you manage to to build that uh, into your relationship and have a good, healthy balance there? Yeah, I think part of it. Uh, one, I, I I don't know that there's such a thing as balance. I, I'm this is just my own personal yeah. opinion, yeah. like. Like what I do is what I love, so it's going to integrate. All in one. It's going to integrate into everything I do. Yep. Um, Integration. And yeah. and, I, and I think to try to separate it, oh, we can't talk about that. Well, but that's what we do every day together. Yeah. Right. Uh, but how we've been able to manage doing that is we've recognized each other's strengths and weaknesses, mm. and we value each other's strengths. And so we like from my wife. My wife is way better at the people management side than I am. I'm great at the vision, uh, the drive, the uh, financial aspect. Like I thrive in those. Mm -hmm. And so I have I have given up, like I let her be the point person on those decisions. Mm -hmm. I weigh in on those decisions, but at the end of the day, how our organization is set up, whatever she decides, she like her voice trumps mine in that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know what that takes from me? It takes security. To go, mm -hmm. like, I'm going to trust that you're better at this because I've recognized the gifts that you have, and they're different than my gifts. Yeah. And and I'm going to, I'm going to, even though, you know, in the church world, it's like, oh, man, should, like, no, man, she, she has more EQ than I do. That's good. I have more IQ than maybe she does from financial stuff, but when it comes to the emotional quotient and the people thing... She is way better at that than I am. And so I'm going to defer and I'm going to relinquish leadership there and let mm. her own that. That's and good. and so if she goes, hey, this is this is the way I want to do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give my two cents, but then I'm going to go, if that's what we're doing, I will back it. Yeah. Um, and we that's lead, good. we actually, it isn't just she and I, we actually have a leadership team that we all lead together. And we make decisions together Um when it comes to the organization and direction of where we're going. Uh, and I think as your organization grows, if you're gonna be a secure leader, you have to give leadership away and you have to trust other people. And that that's a hard thing to do. Like, this is my baby. Like we, we, we sacrificed everything. Like you're a business owner. You know what it's like, you yeah. sacrifice everything. But at some point, if it's, if it's going to scale, mm -hmm. you're gonna have to relinquish control. And you're gonna have to trust people, but those people better embody your values, better mm -hmm. embrace your culture. Like they better, they better sound like you. They better talk like you. Mm -hmm. They better, mm -hmm. they better relate like you. They might see things differently than you, but they better have that heart. Mm -hmm. um, and and so, but with my wife, man, it's we live, eat, breathe, sleep, church, and like we talk about it at home. We talk about it on dates because it's our life. Yeah. You know, and, and I wish that we could, you know, there's times we go on vacation, like we went on vacation. We ended up, we ended up doing a business plan, you know, and, like, <laughs> and you're like, we're on vacation. I know. Right? <laughs> but you know what it is like, but we love it. Yeah. So why, you know, and you're like, oh, we got to separate. No, it's what right. we love. I, I love her, but we love this and we love it together. Yeah. And so why, why go? You can't. You know, a lot of people are like, you you can't, you need to separate. No, like it's it's how we earn a living. It's it's what we've given our lives to. And so it's just, we're going to talk about Honestly, I feel like we process quite a bit on vacation <laughs> because, yeah, seriously, because you're you're like, we're, we're not from here. We're from Northwest Arkansas. So like when we go to Arkansas, it's a much slower pace. We're with family, but we're able to talk about, and I come from a great family. So like, Going going home for me is not like oh, I'm going to visit relatives. Like I mean, I have an incredible family. So when we go home, we're able to process a lot of things, and our family supports us. So like we actually, I would echo pretty much everything TJ just said. Like we process quite a bit together, and and we moved here and 
didn't I mean we knew TJ and Shayla when we moved here. We didn't know anybody else. Yeah. Um and so we we process a lot of stuff we're going through with them. Um but when we get away, it it almost is like, oh man, I, I freed up all this bandwidth in my mind. I'm not around my normal kind of you know how some things like just kind of get vanilla after a while. Yeah. yeah. Um and so you know, we'll do, we'll do days where we just get away. I love yeah. going to Miami and, yeah. and just cause Miami's weird and it's not like here and, and it just gets a different part of my brain thinking. And I think that's so valuable, but yeah. it's, yeah, I, I think us separating church from family and our relationship, like my kids serve, like my wife sings on our worship team yeah. all yeah. the time. So it's just, it's what we love. So I think, I think that's a, honestly a dream come true for us is like, we get to do what we love. We don't go to work every day going, That's man, so going, it's not work. It, yeah. It's like, I am the most fortunate individual to be at a they church. They pay like us this. to love Jesus. <laughs> Which, I, I mean, don't know. it's a great gig. <laughs> I, and, and if we're you not love incredible. Jesus, it's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. And it, it, but it's a, it's a, there's a weight to it. And yeah. it's, we take it seriously because it matters so much to us that we would literally leave our entire family to come do this. Yeah. And, and they did the same we thing. We did the same thing. You know, yeah. we, 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 we gave up everything to come do this, so it's, uh, it's a privilege, and that's how I look at. I don't, I don't care if if you're giving your life to something, you you got to yeah. look at it like this is a, like the fact that God would trust me to do whatever that is. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. You know, should bring a gratefulness, and it, it should you should be like, man, I'm so privileged that yes. I would be entrusted with whatever that is. And if you get up every day having that mentality, it. It, and it might not happen, right? I mean, there's days where I wake up. Uh, there's probably one day a week. I mean, we talk about this where we get up and we're like, let's just quit. Like, we, we've we talked about like, man, we'll, I was like, TJ, if you quit, I'm going with you. Whatever we do. <laughs> like, uh, we could do a moving company. Like, whatever. Every other, it, uh, yeah. every other week. And every, every other week. Yeah, every it's, Monday. It's every, every Monday, Monday, man. You're just like. You when just you get say, all the hate emails, you know, from whatever you said this past week and that offended somebody, you know, you're just like, ah. But you have people. to. That has to be built into you. Like, yeah. you've got to wake up and just pre Craig Rochelle, great podcast, the Craig Rochelle leadership podcast. He talked, he talked about, um, this mentality of pre-deciding. Yeah. I'm going to pre-decide that I love this That's good. even when I don't feel like I love yeah. it. Yeah. Like, cause eventually if you do that enough, it's not, you're, I think, I think the phrase is f feelings don't lead at least, at least positive or negative feelings. They don't really lead to actions. Like yeah. it's you, you act in something and you decide I'm going to act in this so consistently that I'm going to start to feel different yeah. about what I'm doing. I yeah. tell people in marriages, you don't you don't feel your way into love. You love yeah. into feelings. That's it. Yes, especially in the hardest times. Yeah, yeah. Like mm -hmm. I, I find like if you can find love there, man, that's it. Yeah. You're unbreakable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's where it is. Same thing in business. So if you're listening to this podcast, anything resonating with you, make sure you leave a comment right down below. Subscribe. On our YouTube channel, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, find us on social media. We are here to serve you. Um, last question for both of you. Last question. Um, what's on your heart for this year? What, what has God placed in your heart for this year as a message to share that you can share with our listeners? I mean, the message has been on my heart this year. It's, it's the theme of our church is, is this idea of run. Um, you know, run to your purpose, run to your calling, run to health. Um, you know, for our staff, it's run to ministry. Ministry is people. And so everything is focused on, yeah. on our, our, let's run towards these things. And I think that those things are honestly the, the things that create health in your life. Mm. And if, if, you, if you'll make those your pursuit, and running doesn't mean you're sprinting. It means what is your pace that you mm, can run this year? That's good. Yep. That you can run all year. So good. Yep. So I don't want you sprinting if you're gonna if you're gonna if you're gonna die out mm -hmm. a quarter mile in. <laughs> yeah. I need I need you to create a pace that is gonna help you to run the race for a long period of time. And I, I need you to focus on your your personal health, your spiritual health. I need you to focus on people and loving people well. Mm. And if we do that we're going to build a great church that's going to reach a lot of people that we're our, our mission is we want to make it hard for people to go to hell by making it easy for them to go to church Amen. so they can experience know and follow jesus and so if we run our race well the byproduct is that we will do those things mm. love Good. it my my word for the year for myself personally was home because when home is wow. good yeah pretty much everything else takes care of itself 
Uh, like, so doing, you know, my role has changed quite a bit. My location has changed quite a bit. And so I think that's made me focus a lot more inward on like, man, how are my kids doing? Like if my kids are struggling, like then I need, they need, they need me. They mm -hmm, need mm -hmm, love from their mm -hmm. father. Like, um, and you, you're, that's on your mind. I know quite yes. a bit, Danny is like, man, like if my home and my spouse, especially my spouse, like my, my wife and I are going to Italy this year. We're mm. very excited about that. Yeah. And that that's going to be uh, a time where I know like my home is going to get better because my wife and I got time away together. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm invested in my home because if my home is good, then I think I can impact others for their home to be good. And if their home is good, then every other aspect of their life is going to be okay. Uh, may not be perfect, and and I'm not expecting home to be perfect either. My son's sitting in the room, and he hears me say, "I'm not looking for you to be perfect." Yeah. Like that's an unrealistic expectation. Mm -hmm. But we do have some values that we want you to embody, and we love you. And I want to know what's going on in your life. Like I want to know, man. Like how are you doing? I know this has been hard for you, but also hel helping him understand, like man, like you have purpose in what we're doing, even though it's hard. Because I think this, this is always going to be hard. Choose but, your hard. Yeah, you got to choose your hard. That's so good. Yeah. Boom. Team, that brings us to a close here. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Contractor Click podcast. We'll see you on the next one.